Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to this session. Uh, our session is going to be a panel discussion on achieving five ninths of VNM reliab VNF reliability in telco grade OpenStack cloud. Uh, as you all most probably know, that VNFs or virtualized network functions require five ninths of reliability to be able to deliver the SLA that is required in the telco network. And you most probably also know that achieving five ninths of VNF reliability on OpenStack based cloud platform is challenging to say the least. However, look no further. I have here the esteemed panelist um, for representing from four companies who will discuss about those challenges and uh, provide some of the proposed solutions. So without further ado, let us get started. On my left is Kandan Kathirval. He is lead principal technical architect uh, from AT&T. Sitting next to him is Wayne Walsh. He is SD and NFV solution architect from Intel. Next to Wayne is Rima Yontel. She is senior solutions architect from Red Hat. And uh, farthest from me is Fausto Marci. Did I say it right, Fausto? All right. <laughs> he is principal cloud consultant from Ericsson. Uh, we're from the same company, so I get to get some leverage. <clears throat> and I'm Hasib Akhtar from Ericsson as well. Um, so let me just uh, t tell about the format of the program before we get started. Uh, first of all, I will give our panelists an uh, opportunity to share their thoughts on, on achieving five nines of, of VNF reliability on a telco grade OpenStack cloud. And after that, I'll be asking them a few questions, as well as at the same time, we'll be accepting questions from the audience. So uh, if you'd like to like to utilize your opportunity and ask them questions. Please start to think about them, and uh, as soon as you're ready, you can just line up by the, uh, by the microphones on both sides, and we'll try to get you in as soon as possible. So with that, um, Kandan, if you could please uh, share your thoughts on this topic. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Sure. So the services exposed by the telcos, they are exposed to millions of users. For example, the phones, what we use today, actually, right? So they are, they are all the services provided by a telco. And behind that particular services, what is, what is in, uh, used to be is a physical network function. For example, uh, routers and uh, customer edges, like all sort of like networking devices, which are uh, primarily physical devices, uh, which is deployed actually in the telco networks. And this is how actually for decades, you know, like these are, uh, these run as a physical network functions and mostly supplied by different vendors. And uh, the thing is like it is customized uh, in every aspect of the layer. You can see in this uh, particular chart that uh, physical network functions, you know, like they are built on uh, specific hardware and purpose-built software. So pretty much actually it is tuned for a particular application and nativity of that particular uh, functionality provided by that particular device. But today, uh, what is happening in the industry, I, I think you guys have been seeing that you know, like in this uh, summit, that there's a lot of discussion going on actually to get this all physical network function into a virtual network function. So the one thing is happening is that you know people are just converting actually all these firewalls, routers, and all sort of like networking devices actually into the virtual uh, functions. But what they are forgetting is that it is it's going to run on actually a cloud, right? For example, it's an OpenStack cloud, and the cloud has its own way of you know like uh, providing a resources and uh, a operational methodology for for the workloads which is going to run on the cloud. 
right? So it is not exactly the same when the things come from a physical network function to a virtual network function. So from the design, the things need to be considered that the VNF has to really consider that, you know, the workload is really going to run actually on the uh, cloud, not on the physical workloads anymore, right? So that is pretty much the key. And we see in the industry that, uh, you know, uh, AT&T is actually pioneering uh, in bringing this transformation actually into the industry. And we are actually seeing a lot of challenges that people are just taking the physical function and converting actually into the virtual functions. And it is, it is not meant to, uh, or designed to purely run actually on the cloud. So that's what we want to talk about it actually in this panel, about what the challenges we see and what we have to see in the industry that has to evolve uh, to really support this functionality in the virtual network function. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So one thing actually uh, we've been doing in at and is that we've been measuring the availability of this OpenStack cloud, and you guys may have seen that, you know, like uh, we uh, uh, presented a keynote, and in the keynote we talked about like how large scale we deployed uh, uh, OpenStack cloud in the at and platform. And uh, we measured actually, you know, like how much you know, OpenStack region is actually providing in terms of the availability, because the availability is pretty critical, because all the functionalities and services we provide out of this uh, uh, network function is very critical, because we don't want the cell phone to go down, or we don't want the internet to go down, right? So these are very critical. And therefore, the availability of the cloud and the availability of the VNF is very, very critical uh, when it comes to actually providing a services. So it is very critical that all the functionalities of the cloud is highly reliable, and also the functionalities which are deployed by the VNF is also highly reliable. So the one thing we see in the industry is that, you know, like the OpenStack region today, meaning that all the Nova, Neutron, you know, deployed as a region, it is about three nines which is three nines is about like 8.76 hours of unplanned downtime per year. This does not include any planned downtime. For example, we take for upgrade maintenance and all the stuff. So this 3.99, meaning that, you know, like the platform, which is the cloud platform, is only providing three nines. Above this three nine, the VNF has to build their availability, right? So they have to provide like five nines and six nines and above. So that really means that, you know, they have to build availability beyond what the platform could really support. So this slide actually shows that, you know, if a VNF is transformed, meaning that if a physical firewall is actually a one physical box, and it is transformed actually into a single VM, and it is deployed as a single VM in the, uh, in the cloud, and they would not reach to five nines, because they will be less than three nines. You can see on the bottom of the chart, there is a number that uh, shows that how the deployment model of the VNF and how much they can reach in terms of the availability. So what we see is that, you know, like if a v VNF is actually deployed as a single VM or even a multiple VM actually within a single OpenStack region, there's about like three nines of the availability, which is about like 8.7 hours of downtime per year, right? Then if, if there are two instances of uh, OpenStack within the same data center, then we could actually have the VNF uh, split across the two regions. That would definitely will increase availability to a four nines because you have a two instances of OpenStack region and the, the VMs are split across multiple servers, so the failures are accounted actually in terms of like if uh, there is a physical server failure. So it would reach about like four nines. So the true uh, VNF state that what we call as actually cloud awareness uh, aware VNF is that the VNF has to be minimum in uh, two location and at least you know like a f two to four location that is pretty much the key the reason is that why it is two to four location actually because that's when actually it will really reach a five nines of availability by giving the platform is it's only the three nines so this is what actually we are learning through the industry and uh, what we are actually experiencing actually and there were a lot of sessions people who had talked about this and it's pretty much that you know community has to uh, not only concentrate on many projects and many functionality but also has to you know consider that uh, availability and stability of the platform and the open stack is very very critical uh, next slide please so we, we think from uh, at and perspective that these are the uh, key functionalities or areas that uh, community and we are willing to work with the community to actually enhance with respect to the OpenStack. Uh, for example, hitless upgrade, this is the one key area. Uh, it is really needed actually to reduce the overall uh, downtime required to actually upgrade the OpenStack from one version to another version. 
And then policy-driven uh, live and offline migration, uh, this is also very much important. Uh, given that, you know, like the VNFs are trying to achieve like high, availabil uh, high availability, also the high performance, they are trying to use like SRIOV, uh, huge pages, CPU pinning, that means that they are pretty much locked down actually in a physical server, right? Until the VNFs are truly uh, became, you know, like highly available across multiple location, it is very much needed that platform has to support this live and offline migration. So there is already a functionality, but this has to be enhanced to support SRIOV, uh, CPU pinning, and huge pages, these sort of like new technologies which are uh, used by the VNF to increase the performance of that particular VNF. And also the open stack, you know, like has to adopt that multi-location awareness. This is very much needed because we expect the VNF has to be deployed in multiple location. But the fact is that, you know, like in order to deploy multiple location, the cloud has to support uh, to allow the VNF to deploy it in multiple locations. So that is very much a key. So that's why we like to see that multi-location awareness and workload, uh, workload placement in the open stack. The another key area we see is that a resiliency and stability testing framework. So OpenStack really is really awesome, and it has a lot of, you know, like uh, uh, test cases could be used, and we actually use, like, uh, uh, in uh, testing the scale testing and performance testing. So there are two key areas missing, actually, in the OpenStack Rally. For example, resiliency testing. If an OpenStack controller, uh, one of the controller goes down, like, how do I stimulate it and test it before it happens, actually, in the production? And also the stability of the platform, meaning that when I do the scale, when things, something fails, like, how does that will react in, uh, in, in the production? So that has to be enhanced in the OpenStack Rally. And also the other thing is, like, we expect, uh, I, I've been actually on multiple, uh, uh, you know, sessions, and the one thing I expect, I see that is, like, uh, people are expecting that the OSS, BSS, especially the monitoring aspect of it is really outside the OpenStack. Uh, I think the one thing has to happen is like anything from a healing aspect, like for example, if the OpenStack is deployed in the three controllers, and if one, one controller goes down, they need to be a way of actually auto-healing itself to become, you know, like uh, three, three controllers. So these are the areas we really see that enhancement has to be happening, but it doesn't mean that it's only all OpenStack, but also actually we like to see that VNF has to evolve. And especially that the VNF has to be uh, both locally and globally, uh, redundant, the way I was showing on the slide, in order to truly achieve the finance and above, it has to be deployed in multiple locations. So it is very much the key. And that's what we're saying that, you know, like it's not just a requirement and recommendation to the OpenStack, but also actually to the VNF. And, we, and also the key factor is that VNF has to use the functionality is exposed by the OpenStack. For example, you know, like OpenStack, you can actually use anti-affinity rule in pushing the VM into a multiple server so that, you know, like you have one server fail, you don't really lose all the servers. So that is pretty much a key. So it is not just actually exposing the functionality out of the OpenStack and having the APIs exposed, but also actually that VNF has to be using it. Then only, you know, like uh, they will achieve the high availability. Thank you. So um, the, the next file is, is kind of a double click down I into the, the data center or the cloud paradigm that Candom was, was describing. And what we're looking at here in, in the highlighted section is that kind of, is the platform in that context. And in this context, we're talking about the compute, the network, the storage, but also the OS and the hypervisor. Uh, and for, to reach the reliability that Candon was talking to, the, the cloud and the infrastructure needs to be more intelligent and needs to understand the, and correlate the, the physical and the virtual aspects of that cloud. Um, at Intel, we're looking at you know, platform service assurance being an essential part of giving that intelligence to the cloud and to the data center. So when we talk about platform service assurance, we kind of talk about it in, in, in three kind of main terms, provisioning, monitoring and telemetry, and then action. And from a provisioning perspective, most people jump to you know, enhanced platform awareness and, and using the intelligence of the infrastructure to place the VNF in the most adequate location. But what we also need to think about at that time is, is that location giving me the correct information I need to ensure the service can be provided and can be provided over the life, life cycle of the VNF and the function it's supplying? And then we look at, at monitoring and telemetry. Um, 
what in the infrastructure do I need if I'm going to use an accelerator, if I'm going to use a specific CPU or NIC? What information do I need off that infrastructure that tells me I'm hitting my SLA or if I am going to have a service degradation? Um, so within monitoring, what we're looking to do is get a, an open set of APIs, both northbound towards the VNF and towards the element management system and east-west towards the VIM. So we have a common data set and a common understanding that when the VIM is reporting infrastructure and, and other service degradation and faults, and the VNF is reporting through its element management system, that there is a way to correlate both the physical and the virtual elements into a common fault, and that we don't have alarms all over the system. And then from a, an alerting perspective, or a, an action perspective, do we push everything up northbound and into the manual layer and, and let that make the decisions? What do we have to fail fast? What do we need to live migrate a, a VNF or foreseeing service degradation? Can we do more intelligence lower down, like thresholding? So if we're seeing um, issues within DPDK or an SRIOV interface, or if we're seeing common error failures in DRAM, can we make intelligent decisions at the platform level uh, quickly rather than ha having to push everything up into a decision making process and then move it where we'll have service degradation before we've taken action. So if we move to the next file. So some of the things you know we're looking to do is as I already spoke about an open APIs so we have a, a set of data and a, a bus that everything can subscribe to and also then how do we automate that provisioning and that monitoring through the salometer, the heat, uh, ironics, and, in, and within EPA, and in the enhanced platform awareness. So when we're placing that VNF, we have that monitoring telemetry baked into our thinking at day zero, not day zero plus N. Uh, and then, the inter again, the NOVA scheduler, so that we're thinking of that the whole way through the process. Right. Uh, so to further build upon the points that uh, Kandan and Owen made, um, in some cases, uh, the provided services, for instance, a mobile user uh, consuming content on his device or making a call, or an enterprise connecting uh, remote branches with the main office using layer three VPNs, these types of services are not confined to one VNF or one site or one uh, OpenStack region. They often spend multiple uh, VNFs, uh, possibly you know, service chain together through the different geographic locations, through the different OpenStack regions. And uh, you want the service to stay reliable and always on regardless of possible failures in uh, some hardware or in portions of the platform. So, um, the end goal is that reliable always-on service uh, enabled by the platform that has end-to-end um, -end type of monitoring and fault detection and alarming and is able to take actions uh, to provide the um, self-healing service end-to-end. -end. So this is sort of, uh, if you will, a nirvana for service providers, right? Without any intervention, your service works even though you have individual hardware failures or software failures. So um, how do we achieve a service like this? Um, uh, in a, when you have a fairly uh, unreliable cloud infrastructure underneath, so without having to overbuild everything. Uh, well, if you look at the MANO uh, stack, you will see um, service orchestration and network orchestration. So the, these two components need to be able to make uh, service decisions dynamically by uh, not only at the point of deploying the service, but through the life cycle of that service. So when there are dynamic changes in the network and in your platform, uh, you react to them dynamically as well. How do they achieve it? Well, they get the data and the information that they make decisions on from things like service assurance and uh, analytics part of the MANA stack. Those, in turn, uh, get their data that they make decisions on from the interfaces they have to the VIM, to network controllers, 
and possibly to even the uh, cloud-aware applications once you know they introduced to this environment. So you gather the information uh, and you correlate it from the hardware on the individual compute nodes, uh, things that Owen pointed out that they're aware of you know, possible hardware failures or just degradation in service of a particular node. And they correlate it up to the hypervisor and farther up to the instances that are running on that hypervisor, meaning the VNFs or the VNF components. But then you take it a step farther and you correlate it to the service itself where you have uh, different compute nodes across different uh, sites and across different regions. So basically you tag all the components that your service uh, touches as one thing that you're looking at. And you look at the health of the whole service as opposed to the just uh, health of individual component. So you know when something fails, whether it's important and you need to migrate or to take action, or whether it's something that can be taken care of later or just completely ignored uh, the way they do it in, say, Google or Facebook data centers, you know, just run to failure and, you know, keep on chugging. So um, once you have that sort of end-to-end uh, -end service view, you can make your decisions and you can treat your service as one um, correlated event, if you will. And um, basically, this way you can ensure that the end-to-end -end, uh, SLA is met without having to worry about meeting an SLA on each individual component, or even thinking of individual components as something that uh, is important. Um, so, uh, next slide, please. So, but to be able to do that, and that's something that uh, right now OpenStack is working on through um, projects like Silometer and Manaska and few others, um, things that allow you to collect uh, monitoring data, reporting, fault detection, alarming, but you need to be able to bring them all together across different uh, regions, uh, geographic locations into one pane of glass. So you need tools to measure, monitor, er and report end-to-end -end from the customer, you know, in, if you're talking about the call, from uh, the person who makes the call to the person who picks up the call and make sure that it all uh, is visible to the service provider. Thank you. So linking to the following up, uh, one of the previous, previous point on uh, Intel smart workload management, uh, it's important to take in consideration that the, the services availability is a fundamental part uh, to achieve um, uh, five nine reliability. So on this pan, we are going to, exp to show a basic workflow, workflow where we are going to take in consideration compute node HA on uh, local, which means uh, within the same data center, or global on, on multiple data center. So this will be a general uh, overview. So basically, the, the, the prerequisite in, in local uh, environment is that the, the, the compute nodes needs to have a shared storage. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, also the, 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 in the disaster workflow, it is important that the, the detection of the disaster itself, this can be done by monitoring hardware the compute nodes and the hypervisors. So once the, the, the disaster is detected, is it possible to evacuate the compute nodes? So evacuate all the, all the, the workload, and, uh, which is more likely to be the virtual machine with all the related metadata to another compute nodes. At that point, the users can connect to their services to the other compute node and the, 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 the service itself provided by the compute node, it's, it's, uh, it's available, uh, keeps being available. One of the risks of this strategy is the fencing, because if in the meantime we didn't fence the, the, the compute node that failed, we can say bye-bye to the 5.9 uh, reliability. So on the next slide, 
we can we are uh, we use this we show a similar workflow for compute node H A in multiple data center where it's quite similar. The the difference is that that in the in the operational workflow we need to know beforehand the floating IP managed by the, the, the compute node itself. And that floating IP needs to be managed and announced with the routing protocol, which can be OSPF or BGP. Or SPF, it's better if there is an internal link between the data center. At BGP, it's better if there is, uh, if the if the link is through the internet. So, in the disaster workflow, basically, when the disaster is recovered, basically with the same principle des described before, the 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 compute node the compute node is evacuated in the compute nodes in the other data center, and uh, the basically the the the, the floating IPs to the new VMs needs to be re-announced with the related uh, routing protocols because otherwise there will be uh, no routing available to reach the services provided by the compute nodes. So this is a fundamental part. And the, so therefore the, the, the floating IP are announced by BGP and OSPF. So the users can connect again and all the traffic is redirected from the old data center to the new data center which is which is a nice thing. By having multiple data center, we avoid the fact of concentrating the workload of the failed data center to only one other data center, so we can spread the load and the service will be better. The risks of this is that if we fence, if we do not fence again the, the, the compute node or the network or the data center, when, when the service will come up, uh, bye bye to the five nines. Next slides, please. So we need, we need tooling to solve this and something it's being done you know, in, in OpenStack and uh, we need to do more and we need everybody to provide feedback and insight and, and knowledge, uh, sharing knowledge on this and this basic, basically is it. Thanks. Thank you all. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, come by the microphone and, and ask the, the panelists. Um, and while, I'm, while you're uh, thinking about your questions, let me ask them my question. Uh, so what changes do you like to see to make the VNFs more cloud aware? Let's start with Kandan. So it goes back to my presentation, right? So it's really come down to the mantra of two things. One is like the VNF achieving high availability by, from the design, right? So that is a very important factor. It is not that while deployment, you think about the high reliability or availability, but from the design, you have to think about the high reliability and availability. That's a one key, uh, key item. The second item is actually the platform has to be highly reliable and available. And it is very important that you know, uh, OpenStack, uh, the features and functionality, what we are listing down actually, this has to be uh, incorporated actually into the OpenStack so that the platform can actually support high, high availability uh, for the VNFs which are going to run. I suppose from an infrastructure point of view, uh, coming at it from a, a vendor, a silicon vendor perspective, you know, our role is to, is to make sure that the cloud is more intelligent, that it understands the technologies under, under, underpinning it. Um, so when the VNF is placed, it can take advantage of everything that, that it's supposed to and that the correct information is being fed forward um, so the service can be made more available. Um, I, I think that's our bit. Thank you. Well, if you look at the workloads themselves, um, the telco applications right now are very, um, very state stateful. So one of the things that can be changed is to look at them and see how they can be made stateless. So they're not as dependent on um, being up all the time so you can lose an instance of the applications without losing the application itself. So, um, if you see the environments of the huge environment, uh, basically they are the, the, it's where the biggest challenges are, are addressed and the biggest problems are, are, are solved and where really the technology moves forward. It's not uncommon to see that in, in big environments, highly scalable environments, you can find OpenStack, multiple OpenStack distribution, 
uh, being part of the same, let's say, cloud platform or the same, the same company asset. It is truly important that the vendors of OpenStack distribution make all their efforts to work together to, uh, to provide and achieve a common framework of, to achieve uh, uh, like a f five nine reliability rather than each one pushing or providing his own proper solution that it's probably little, have a little, um, it can be integrated very little with the others. So I think the next challenge is it's really to, to, to work together and to provide to the community a common framework to add this by being a little bit more open rather than going on, on, on its own solution, vendor driven. Okay, thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, so we have some questions from the audience. We'll take this one from first. Um, I think one comment, if I understand it correctly, is uh, when you do the service assurance, uh, you look at the service level rather than look into the uh, individual component. Um, the, the question is how you address, let's say, if at the component level you have, you know, you're building some HA, uh, <coughs> let's say if you have uh, some of the component fail, but it still doesn't impact your service. Uh, you don't want to wait until like all the you know, components fail, then you address that, right? So how you balance, like look at the service level and also more proactively look at the component level? Uh, it is very good question. Uh, so when it comes to the service availability, right? So there's gonna be a multiple components with, uh, with respect to it. And uh, for example, there could be hundreds of VM which is making actually a services. Usually in a telco world, if you see that it may be 10,000 of VM which is making a one particular service. and Maybe not all VMs and VNFs are actually on the critical path in providing that particular service, and those VMs could be addressed uh, not five nines. Maybe it's less than you know five nines, like four nines or three nines. But VMs which are VMs and VNFs which are has to be supporting the services, which has to be highly available, and that has to be you know like uh, has to be built from the design and deployed in such a way that the way I was showing, like in multiple data center, to really achieve that high availability. So it is not a single answer for all the VNFs and VMs, but it really goes by that particular service and application, like how it has to be deployed. So when the service is being modeled, so they had to look at actually all the aspect of the components going in the service, then try to see how to balance actually that which VNF is really needed higher availability to achieve that particular services which is going to be offered to an internal or external customer. You want to add? Sure. Right, so um, I also think that uh, they're sort of independent. You want to make sure your platform is working, right? Because you want to run services on it and then you want to make sure your service is running. So you have a, a view of your service and you look at the individual components of the service and you see which ones might be in potential trouble, but that trouble is determined by the state of your platform. So um, if your service and the individual components of the service, each application are able to maintain their uh, availability, availability uh, flexibly, so it's not only like one VM uh, performing a particular task, but uh, multiple VMs that can take over each other. So if one of them goes away, it's uh, not detrimental to the service itself. Uh, that's how you assure it on uh, the VM level. But then uh, on the platform level, uh, being able to um, like migrate all the, um, the whole host, if you see that one of your hosts, for instance, is about to fail. So being able to proactively react to different events on the service level and on the platform level, and also correlate them between each other. So if you see you need to migrate a particular host, the notification goes out that uh, you know, the VMs that are running on this host might be going away. Uh, for a little while, so like don't schedule a task on those VMs because you have other uh, VMs that are doing the same, uh, fun have the same functionality and they can take care of those tasks right now. So it's a, it's a cooperative effort between all the different components. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, the next question. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry, Asim. 
There is a very, I want to, yeah, to provide also uh, an answer to the, to the previous question. It is also important to understand that even if the, all the toolings are available there for detection and, and correction and so on, it's more likely, it's not likely to happen that we will, are going to have completely self-healing and self-resilient services and, and, and code and so on. If that will be the case, I bet that at least 70% of the people that are here wouldn't be here probably in the first place. But it's important to have also an operational managing operations, in, and I really mean it, in an efficient way. And, and that is a part that we are not going to escape from the, from the real world, really. Go ahead, please. Yeah. A question here to the panel. Uh, how relevant is this finite, really, in the uh, community of service providers? We hear different things. If I go to China Mobile, they'll say, hey, who the hell cares about it? 4.9 is enough for me. If you go to Google, they say, forget it. We don't need all that. We can always take care. So from point of view of microservices, coming up and disaggregation occurring in the gateways and all that, what do you see uh, the relevance of this and why do you think that service assurance is so important? It is very important that when I take my cell phone and call 911, I expect it's supposed to work, right? So it's really, uh, it's really a depend upon what services are actually provided by this VNF, right? So it varies from companies to companies, right? So if they offer a particular service, they would say that, okay, I'm going to satisfy this particular uh, level of, you know, like service assurance, and they have to stick to that numbers. So depending upon what services these are actually, so depending upon that, you know, like a specific availability numbers goes on. But what we see actually in the telco world is like, uh, especially in US that, you know, uh, most of the services offered out of the telcos are actually need to be highly reliable. And the VNFs themselves has to be, you know, like more than five nines to support those services. And you talked about the microservices actually, it's a good point. Uh, it is one of the enabler actually to achieve this actually the separation of functionalities of a, of a VNF in the multiple VMs because we have seen uh, that usually people are actually converting actually a physical firewall or actually in a customer edge router as actually a single VM. And these microservices would actually allow to split the functionality on multiple VMs so that, you know, like you don't have a one single VM failing down and, you know, creating an outage to the application. And it is a good question. Hopefully it answered uh, your question. Thank you. Yeah. I suppose just to, to hit the, the question in, in, in a slightly different way, if we look at the move towards virtual functions onto infrastructure, if we mimic the way we did it of old, we would just do a single VNF instance on one piece of hardware and would not do multi-tenancy. And then we start to lose the TCO model we've all been talking about over the last few years as to why we're moving here. So we can now land multiple services on a single infrastructure. And to get away from the five nines nomenclature and more talk about the assurance uh, speak, as you mentioned, is how can I assure that service when I have several services on the same infrastructure? And that's back to, I think, what everyone has mentioned here, is being able to identify the utilization by each virtual function on the infrastructure and being able to tell if something is taking its unfair share of that infrastructure. So if we use a basic you know, CPE model where we're delivering services to, a, to a, uh, an enterprise, if I'm delivering a firewall and a router service on the same function and they're both using different areas of cache and someone is being disruptive, who am I migrating? Am I migrating all of it? So it, it's back to, I think, what we're all talking about is that service assurance level underpinning the five nines reliability. Uh, and I think it was a really good question to that end. Yeah, can we go to the next question first? Though? Let's, uh, please go ahead. Um, thank you. So my question is more of a tactical question. It seems that sometimes we can be in a race condition of there can always be enhancements to reliability, but until, like, would that gate us from deploying? Perhaps not. What would be the best strategy to address the availability question in the interim? Was it, would it be to push the application developers to develop, to expect failures in the infrastructure, or is it to rely on partners to develop custom code or glue, if you will, around the, the OpenStack components? Well, um, not to say anything bad about people who are developing telco applications. Um, and uh, some of them are sitting on this panel, well, I guess uh, Ericsson. 
but uh, right now it's more uh, realistic that the platform is going to be made more reliable to accommodate uh, the pet applications that are running on it. But our hope uh, at Red Hat, for instance, is that we can work together with the application developers, with uh, the you know telco services developers, in changing their mindset and how they approach uh, creation of the applications, so they can be platform aware, so they can be self healing, and um, it's much easier to later on pull off and make the platform less reliable then you know if the applications don't meet that expectations of being cloud aware then you know building up your platform uh, to make it you know put crutches under it if you will uh, to make it more reliable so right now yes we're working on creating ha uh, you know for instances for compute nodes for controllers for everything uh, because we want the platform to be as reliable as we can make it Foster? Uh, no. Okay, next question, please. Thank you. Scott Fulton from the Newstack.io. Uh, VNFs require five nines of reliability and availability. Do the contributions that you expect to make to OpenStack and you and your organizations, will those contributions make five nines available to everyone in OpenStack? Or do you foresee that there will be classes or categories of users from with telcos being on the five nines and then a group on the four nines and a group on the threes who will use a different open stack but who expect perhaps less from it? Uh, it is a very good question. So the whatever it is getting contributed actually from the telco community back into the open stack, it is for all, right? Open stack is for all. Uh, so the fact is that the, once the functionality is actually in the platform, for example, the resiliency feature is actually in the platform, then it is up to the user or the, it's up to the deployment person to decide like how to use it, right? So there could be hundreds of API or there could be thousands of API. It doesn't mean that all thousand API has to be used by all, right? It, whoever it's applicable to it, they will actually make use of it. So the intention of the telco world is to really have all this, you know, like nice cool features introduced actually into the platform. So irrespective of who the user is, so you've got a stable platform, then, you know, like depending upon how do you use it is actually up to the, you know, like the person, uh, the enterprise to decide like how they want to use it. Anyone else? I just wanted to agree with Connor and thank him for that because at Red Hat, that's our philosophy. We don't want to fork OpenStack. One is for enterprises, one is for carriers, one is for you know somebody who wants to play around with it. Uh, no, we want to have all the features in it, all the resiliency, availability, everything, and then it's up to you to use it or not. No, uh, well. Um, that's all the time we have, okay, and one, oh, one more question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Until I'm told to live, go ahead. Uh, quick one. So in the telco world, normally a VNF is not just an application that you can spin up with an API call, right? You, let's say if you spin up a router or firewall, you yeah. configure that specific to your end customer. Like you need to configure the firewall rules or VRFs. So if the VM goes down, and you want five nines of availability, you can't just spin up another instance of a VM somewhere and expect it to work because you need to copy the exact same configs to the new VM. So that means you need to do regular backups and you need to keep the history of all the services somewhere. So where in this architecture would you do that? Uh, it is a very good question. So usually the VNFs, you know, like depending upon how it is deployed. So the way I was showing in the slide is that, you know, like you pre-deploy in five location, for example, or three location, depending upon how much availability is needed. Uh, so, so that is how, you know, like has to be, the availability has to be achieved. So the part, of, the part is like, you know, whether you deploy during the disaster or you deploy in like a pre-deploy. Most of the condition actually it is pre-deployed because you know like you don't want to have uh, time taken because to create itself it would take some time and it may be like two minutes, three minutes, and three minutes would impact that five nines availability or six nines availability. 
So the fact is that, you know, like it is not just the VM. When we say actually, you know, like have the VNF provision, it is not just by creating the VM, but also you have to provision the code inside it. For example, Attacker is a nice project actually coming in the OpenStack forum is that to actually not only create the VM, you can actually go and provision the VM with respect to the uh, codes and configuration needed actually in the VM. So it is really, wor it's really the orchestration and uh, the platform and overall service working together actually to create that uh, holistic service which is going to be provided out of that VNF. Okay, Pascal. Yes, good question. I think the, there are two different problem, problems uh, quite related. The thing is that in OpenStack, we need to have an architectural driven approach segmented where we segment the problems that are related to the others and we provide solution to address that segment. And uh, the, in my example, I was mentioning the evacuation. So the evacuation, assuming you have shuttered storage, you are okay. And that address, that specific case, the backup is needed, absolutely yes. That's, that's one of the main parts. But we try to have architectural-driven segmented approach to address specific issues. Otherwise, become really difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think that's all the time we had. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate um, you, uh, the, the panelists' time and, and participation. And thank you all for listening as well. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>